Let's start with the disclaimer first. Hello everyone. First of all, it will be probably a long video, at least longer than five minutes, I hope. So please take some paper to take notes. If you want, you can grab your favorite beverage. Uh, if you want to get some fun, you can play some music on the background, but uh, please make it a bit lower so you can hear me. Let's get started. The nice thing here is uh, issues. So issues contains all stories, epics, subtasks, tasks created in this project. And you can sort them. For example, you want to see only epic or you want to see only task. It helps uh, to search for some of the stories to get a comment from. Because sometimes you might refer to a comment in a story which was closed two, three months ago. It helps you just to find an issue. Or you might have multiply open issues and then you would like to search in them one of the issues that uh, someone has created or it's open and etc. And you are using here some filters. But one of the coolest things that Jira has, it is JQL or I would call it Jira query language. It is quite similar to SQL. I think it is sequential query language. Yeah, structured query language. I apologize. Scru scru structured query language. It is quite similar, but it helps so much us if we want to create a custom filter for your team to get something and etc. How does it work? You are setting here list of the conditions uh, that you will need to fulfill and then uh, how you would like to display these issues in which order, I would say. So for example, you have a project, then you write here, or you want to have project which equal to, and then it can suggest you uh, this project. And if you want, you can surround it by quotes. Then if you want, you can add new condition here, and then you have fields to select. The description and then is not, and then empty. And then you get a list of the items <laughs> with still empty description, but maybe unsaved changes. Ah, yeah, right. I apologize. So here you could see that I got uh, all all issues right now with empty description because I constructed it in the wrong way. So I should surround, as you know, it is something similar to uh, 2 plus 2 multiplied by 2, right? So if you surround it by parentheses like that, then it makes sense. So we have first set of conditions, for example, project equal yep or project equal to and applied to this first filter and description is not empty. Then it will work. And then we have only one story created. As a product owner, as a scrum master, or anyone who is interested in uh, the filters in Jira, I strongly recommend to try out this JQL. That's amazing tool. That's really cool stuff. We have found the filter that we would like to use uh, to see stories with not empty description. We copy it, go to the backlog, for example, then we find here manage custom filters. We put query here and we type here display stories with description. Of course, you can write whatever you want. And now we have a custom filter. We go to the project, go to the backlog and we can use custom filters here, display stories. And we have none of them, of course, because uh, all of them are empty. Some of the companies uh, have the predefined filters here to show not closed stories, stories without epic stories without some fields and etc sometimes up to 20 30 40 filters it is just game changer because sometimes you want to find some specific uh, stories related to a specific topic or mentioning a keyword you just go to issues and then go to the jql and you write here what you want to have that's really cool thing the planning Usually we have the sprint planning and also backlog requirement. There are two meetings when we are planning our work kind of, or we are predicting. Quite often the homework is done by product owner, which is gathering information from stakeholders, customers or users, and then providing this information kind of as an input data to a team. And then together with product owner and scrum master, we are planning what should be added to a sprint or in the backlog. It is the way how do you cut 
or how do you split the stories? Because imagine that we have responsible areas in servers area, in embedded area, in testing area, documentation area. So we have four of them. We might split our work into four stories. Let me create the stories and I will explain what do I mean. So imagine that we have one of the stories is implement application to collect data. Then we need to write unit tests uh, for client and application. Then we need to document code written. And once we implemented, tested and documented, then we need to enable CI in GitHub, for example. I tried to, can I say, cut the issue horizontally, probably. So what do I mean under horizontally? We have a big epic. We have it as read data from client and we have stories. The one item is implement app to collect data. Another one, it is write unit within the same horizontal line. Then write a code element and enable CI in the GitHub. And it is kind of horizontal cut. So we have a several areas to cover. They are made in parallel and it is kind of uh, the standard way how to separate groups. But then we might have a vertical cut kind of. And it means that developers, can I say developer teams, or maybe a developer is responsible for the whole stack of the technology supply. And then it will be a bit different planning, because in that case, we will not have these four stories, but we will have something like introduce a client with, let's call it it, with UT and CI. For example, we, we might have, as I said before, we might have horizontal cut when we have a separate story for application, separate story for unit testing, separate story for documentation and enabling continuous integration. Or we might have vertical cut when we are talking about functionality and then we just say that ah, we want to have another client. And inside this client, we mean that we need to not only implement the code for the client, also add unit tests for it and also write documentation and then enable CI for this uh, component. Estimation of the complexity for this story will be, of course, bigger than these four. You can, of course, separate this story into subtasks. That's absolutely fine. It is just two different ways how to split the responsibility of each of the teams. Because sometimes you want to have embedded team and then you want to have cloud team and then you want to have testing team and you want to use horizontal cut when you have four teams working on the same stack but with different, can I say, areas. Sometimes you want to have Swiss knife team and then you will have a vertical cut when you have kind of a functionality on or domains to work on and then you have for example three teams they are working on three components but everyone inside these teams knows everything about this component so that's a vertical and horizontal cut of course probably there is an official version how to call it that's just an observation and then controversial part because during the planning there is also a personal cut. I would call it, it as individual planning. When you are planning the work, you are trying to separate stories from others in the competences that you are comfortable with. For an abstract example, we are working on the vertical cut. We have this introduce a client with UT and continuous integration. And I am on the developer which has an experience with continuous integration. And I will say that this story with client and UT, it is big enough and we need to split it into two parts related to the client and the unit tests and for the continuous integration. So then you will forcefully take this story and we'll split it into two parts and split it issue. For example, introduce a client with UT and then you will write here something like enable CI for introduce it client, split it. From your perspective, it, it sounds like why you are so picky for these stories. We created and created it. 
But that's a problem because if we will split stories that only one person will work on them, then we are losing uh, in a positive meaning diversity or cross-functionality of the team members. In the end of the day, let's call it it, with some period of time, we will plan our work only in these domains or in these areas. So, for example, one colleague will plan the backlog to work only with the embedded part. One colleague will try to plan the work to work only with continuous integration part. One will work only with the documentation because it's easier and etc and etc and etc. And in the end of the day, you will probably have two, three, four people who will have really deep knowledge in specific areas. And I really hope that they will not have any sick leave or any vacation periods because without them, you're in trouble. As usual, as usual, it happens that it is summertime or something happened. The key person is uh, leaving a project and then everyone got crazy because uh, no one knows their stuff as that person. I would recommend to split it into horizontal or vertical cuts or by areas, but not in personal. For example, I'm really bad in the documentation. I'm really bad on it or in unit testing. So my goal is to include unit testing and documentation in my daily work, not to avoid it because otherwise I will be bad on it. Or if I knew that I'm good at continuous integration, then I should should sometimes intentionally avoid continuous integration work and help others to understand it because I will gain my experience in any way. I will earn it. But in case if I will be in the vacation mode, let's say, other team members can handle it without me. And that's a goal in the end. Our goal is to either work in a group of two or three people in the specific area. For example, if you are working uh, within embedded really close to the hardware, then find two second or third person and work together closely or try to distribute your knowledge within a team so everyone can pick up the story to work on. Try to plan your work either in horizontal cut or vertical cut, but not in personal. I'm begging you. I think that I will stop here. In this video, we went through some basics and also my whining about working with people. I think that's enough for basics of uh, Jira. Of course, more detailed video about specific topics can be recorded in the future. In the next video, we will actually plan the small application, modules, and etc. and the work in the backlog. I will delete all these uh, stories and will create uh, from scratch with proper planning and it will be recorded, of course. Thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.